So good afternoon. I'm Chris Cooney uh, with the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. It's my pleasure to welcome you here to the historic Thomas Edison Building. Uh, it is home to the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this is our regularly scheduled monthly uh, meeting of our government affairs, uh, and the Metro South Chamber of Commerce is uh, delighted to have you all with us today. The, um, the Metro South Chamber of Commerce is the region's oldest chamber of commerce, and uh, it is also accredited by the United States Chamber of Commerce. Chamber serves Brockton and all of the surrounding communities. Uh, this forum features the final two candidates uh, for mayor in the city of Brockton. Uh, seating is limited, so we ask that you take a seat and remain in it uh, while the recording is going on. Our friends here from uh, Brockton Access, Community Access, will be recording uh, this event and will be playing it throughout the remaining weeks of the election cycle. We ask at this time, and I'm going to take a little bit of time for this, for you to shut off your cell phones. Uh, I've heard several go off, uh, and it does impact the quality uh, of the event and the concentration of the candidates as well as the uh, quality of the recording. So if you would do that at this time. Thank you. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our moderator and uh, uh, Ray Ledoux. Uh, Ray is the uh, administrator for the Brockton Area Transit Authority and also serves as our government affairs uh, chair. Ray Ledoux. Thank you, Chris. Well, thank you, Chris, and welcome everyone. I think uh, Chris did cover a couple of our uh, housekeeping items, please. Um, uh, turn your cell phones off, and that would be great. That will provide for a much more enjoyable and efficient event. Uh, at this time, we will ask you to remain quiet while we welcome the candidates for mayor. The candidates will be introduced in the order of the drawing results held before the forum and will enter this room when introduced. We ask them to stand until both are present, and I will ask them to take their seats so we may begin. The first candidate, uh, or the first debater and the first candidate, is Mr. Robert Sullivan. Robert Sullivan was born and raised in Brockton, where he attended Brockton Public Schools and graduated from Brockton High School in 1988. He earned a BA and an MBA at Boston College and his JD at New England School of Law. He has been the business owner of a law practice since 2002 and served as the town attorney for the town of Randolph from 2009 to 2014. He was elected to the Brockton City Council in 2006 and has been elected by his peers to serve as the City Council President four times, a position he currently holds. He is a volunteer youth soccer, baseball, and basketball coach in the city and is a volunteer board member of the Brockton Historical Society. He also serves as the chairman of the Board of Governments on the Board of Gov uh, Good Samaritan Medical Center. He is married to Maria. Louise Sullivan, and they have three ch children. Please help me in welcoming Councillor Sullivan. Our next candidate is Mr. Jimmy Pereira. Jimmy Pereira was born and raised in Brockton. He is a lifelong resident of the city. He graduated from Westfield State University with a bachelor's degree in geography and regional planning. He then worked for the Massachusetts Bicycle Coalition as the healthy design coordinator and helped to make the city of Springfield a bicycle friendly community. Jimmy currently serves as a community and transportation planner with the Commonwealth's local regional planning agency <clears throat> known as Old Colony Planning Council and he's tasked with the physical, social and economic development of Brockton and 16 other communities across southeastern Massachusetts. He also serves as the vice chair of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. Please help, help me in welcoming Jimmy Pereira. <laughs> so if you'd please have your seats, gentlemen. Before we begin today's candidates forum, I will review the ground rules that have been established for today's forum and agreed to by both candidates. First, the order for opening remarks Q&A and closing remarks is based on a drawing that took place with the candidates earlier today. Opening remarks are to be two minutes each, response to questions at one minute, time will be kept by a member of the chamber staff sitting here in the front row, candidates will be alerted 
of remaining time at 30 seconds and 15 seconds with a sign held up by the timekeeper. Closing remarks are allowed and should take place for no more than one minute. And we ask that the audience do not participate in asking any questions, making any comments, any cheers, or any applause during this time. We will now begin with the opening remarks and I remind that each candidate, please keep your remarks to two minutes. Councillor Sullivan, would you like to begin? Thank you, Ray. First of all, I want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here today. I want to thank Brockton Community Access uh, for, for filming this. I want to thank Chris Cooney and uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this is an important, important day uh, for the future of Brockton. My name is Robert Sullivan, and for the last 14 years, I've proudly served as a council at large, serving the entire city of Brockton. Um, this election coming up in less than three weeks, November 5th, will determine not just the mayor, but some new councillors on the city council and some school committee. Um, and why I'm running for mayor, quite honestly, is Brockton needs to do better. Brockton needs to do better together. Um, the days of walls being put up have to go. We need to be inclusive and collective together. Brockton is here. We can't afford to go down. We need to go up. I believe with my experience, my skill set, my legal training, and my business background, uh, I am the, the candidate that can do that on day one. Uh, if you were going to hire a CEO of a business, and that's what Brockton is, it's a business of $440 million, you wouldn't hire someone that doesn't have the experience to lead that business, and I believe that I do. I, I welcome uh, any questions today, and at the end of the day, uh, I hope you walk away here saying that Robert Sullivan is going to be the next mayor of the city of Brockton. But I'm just humbly asking for your consideration. Uh, and, and again, I, I just want to thank everybody for coming here today. It's, it's exciting because you're engaged in the city of Brockton, so thank you very much. Well, thank you, Councillor Sullivan. Mr. Pereira, your opening comments, please. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Mr. Ray Ledoux, uh, for being a moderator. Thank you for the Metro South Chamber of Commerce for uh, hosting this event. Uh, thank you for the uh, <clears throat> Broughton Cable Access for recording us. And thank you for our uh, guests for being here and uh, being involved uh, with this forum. Uh, as mentioned, born and raised in the city of Broughton. I have a degree in regional planning. I work at the Old County Planning Council. I ran in 2017 against the late uh, Honorable Mayor Carpenter. Uh, and at that time, uh, he was at his strongest. And uh, I seen a challenge. I seen uh, the changes that needed to be made. I did see the progress, but I knew that we needed to do more. Uh, and that's why I ran in 2017 and actually uh, being the only candidate that ever gave him a congratulatory uh, phone call we made sure to stay in touch share our visions and know that we may all, ha all have different visions but the objective is the same is to make Broughton better uh, while after uh, uh, not winning 2017 I continue to be involved uh, with not just the uh, Democratic City Committee but with the city uh, in general uh, obviously at the, tra the uh, planning agency I reached out to uh, all different communities and all different uh, initiatives being done in the city of Broughton uh, so knowing what's going on knowing where the projects are and knowing how that we need to continue to move the city forward is what I have experienced and what I want to continue to do for the city. Uh, we have a lot of uh, projects that are coming down the pipeline. We need someone that's been at that table. I've been involved in the Broughton Urban Revitalization Plan, been involved in the uh, parking plan as well, uh, and also other initiatives uh, that have been going on, not just here in Broughton, but the greater Broughton area and the state as well. Uh, so if we're looking for a candidate, we need someone that has experience, that has the knowledge, the educational background, and also the uh, uh, energy to make sure that we continue to move this city forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pereira. <clears throat> Our first uh, question uh, will be uh, responded to by Mr. Pereira, and this is a result of our earlier drawing. And there are a set of questions here that uh, come, to, come to you today that are comprised of a number of position papers that the chamber has received uh, through the redo and economic eff efforts of the Commonwealth, different position papers. Some of the questions are those uh, developed by chamber board members through the different community uh, committees. And some of the questions lastly are developed by some of the constituents that come in contact with our president of the chamber. So Mr. Pereira, the first question is <clears throat> related to the former Christos and Massachusetts uh, Massasoit Conference Center site. The original plan in 2013 was to take the former Christo's restaurant site and to turn it into an allied health and science center for Massasoit Community College. It appears the original plan is dead, and it, along with the former conference center, is under the control of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. What do you think should happen to this combined site, and what role will you play as mayor? Great question. Uh, in my opinion, uh, and actually my uh, uh, opponent can actually uh, talk more about this as well, uh, there's a s uh, 
Uh, there's a designated location on the other side of the campus that has been designated 40R Smart Growth. I think that was the wrong idea. I think it should be designated on the other side uh, where the uh, Crystal site is, and we should also look at a SWOT analysis where we can compare uh, different uh, options and phases that we can implement in that location, uh, knowing that the old Kanye Planning Council is also uh, putting dollars there. The state is putting dollars there to uh, improve that intersection, which some has already been done. Uh, but we need to make sure that we're looking at the network and the fabric of that community. I would like to advocate for an allied health center. But again, I'd also look at different options so we can make sure that there's a perfect fit for that, uh, that area as well. Uh, and again, making sure that we are collaboratively working with the state delegation and working with the city as well, too, and making sure that we have the studies in place to move forward with that project. Thank you. And Councillor Sullivan, uh, related to the Christos in Massachusetts Conference Center site? Well, first of all, that's a perfect location. Um, it's, it's flat. It's almost seven acres. Uh, even though it's owned by the Commonwealth right now, right now DCAM is in charge of that. Uh, the assessed value uh, of the building in the raw land is a little over $4 million. It's really ripe for development. And I know Senator Brady and State Representative Dubois are working uh, together on that. Uh, there was a meeting yesterday at the State House that I was brought forward to because I'm the acting mayor right now with Mayor Rodriguez being out of, out of the, the country. Um, you know, it looks like it's going to be queued up for, uh, for February. So whoever's elected mayor will be a, a vital part of that. Um, but it, it could be mixed use. Uh, there's a hotel concept over there. Uh, there's residential uh, components over there. It's really at a prime logistic standpoint in terms of traffic flow. Uh, so I'm going to support any development that goes there. Um, you know, we need to look at wisely, you know, that it doesn't have a negative impact on the neighborhood and the businesses that are there. But uh, it, it's going to be development. Whoever becomes mayor will make sure of that. I, I rest assured on that. Thank you. Well, well thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, the next question is related to the rooms and meals tax. And we're going to ask Councillor Sullivan to respond first. Uh, the city raises more than $1 million in taxes every year from customers at Brockton hotels and restaurants. Would you support the creation of a home rule petition to establish a permanent Brockton Promotions Fund to foster more hotel stays, beautification, and special events, as is seen in the communities of Sandwich, Sturbridge, and Plymouth? Absolutely. So for 14 years, I've worked on 14 budgets, and, uh, and Chris Cooney always comes before us in his capacity, and we talk about this. And uh, without question, I would do that. Now, the process of a home rule petition, and I used to work at the state house as, as legal counsel, uh, it would have to be passed at the local level, the city council, uh, and then it would be sent up to the state house. It would have to be vetted on the house side and the senate side, and then it would have to come back for a ballot initiative, meaning the Brockton voters would have to go to the polls to vote on that. I think it's creative. I think it's a tool in the toolbox that we should really consider. Uh, at the end of the day, if we can do anything, uh, you know, that's going to benefit Brockton and the residents, we need to consider that and vet it out. Um, the communities you mentioned are not on par with Brockton. Uh, the number one asset that Brockton has is the people. So if we can benefit the people, absolutely. But we need to work with the state delegation, the three state reps, and the state senator. And I would be an advocate banging the drum for that like I've done for 14 years, Ray. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Mr. Pereira? Yes, <clears throat> I would most certainly uh, support a Brockton Promotions Fund, but I also take a step forward and make sure to focus on bettering the marketing aspect of the city of Brockton. Uh, right now, we're dealing with the per uh, the uh, perception that Brockton is a, a crime-ridden city. Uh, there isn't any opportunities there, which I think is a lie. Uh, if we do a better job at marketing and creating the environment to show that Brockton is a prosperous city, uh, then we would go farther as well. So that means including the wayfinding. We don't have any wayfinding. We need to make sure that people know where the hotels are uh, so they can visit the hotels and stay there. Uh, we also need to make sure that our website and everything else is up to par. We spent $80,000 on it, and there's still a lack of uh, uh, information provided on that website. Uh, so we need to not just look at the uh, uh, what can be done, but also look at the innovation, how we can move further, uh, and also, again, looking at different uh, uh, facets and how to get that job done. Thank you. I yield my time. Well, thank you. Uh, our next question uh, will be uh, first responded to by Mr. Pereira, and it's related to uh, the city of Brockton's existing commercial and industrial properties that we have. In understanding that Brockton has existing available commercial and industrial property, what will you do as mayor to generate more demand for this commercial and industrial property here within the city? Great question. <clears throat> so. Again, to expand on the marketing aspect of it, you need to make sure that you're looking at the risk assessment. When an investor comes in, they're going to look at everything up and down for the city of Brockton. Public safety, transportation, uh, traffic congestion, and also, again, other uh, economic uh, opportunities that may uh, arise in the city of Brockton, uh, including water. Water expansion is very important when we want to bring development to the city. So we really need to look at what are we going to do with Aquaria? Or are we going to look at different options as well? Uh, being a planner, we always look at the multifaceted approach, making sure that we know 
uh, where we're going and looking at uh, what we're going to do if that doesn't work. So making sure you have a backup plan. Uh, what I will be doing is, again, making sure to help market the city, uh, working collaboratively with all the different departments and the workers on the uh, ground level as well to make sure that we not just clean up Brockton, but we get Brockton ready for investors to come in uh, and working with our plan department, working with the uh, parking department, and working with everyone else to know that this is where we want people to come to the city of Brockton, including businesses and other opportunities as well. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pereira. Councilor Sullivan? So last night at the City Council, we just passed uh, a reappointment for Rob May for five years to stay, uh, and that's extremely important for the future of Brockton. We also approved a $4.9 billion bond for our sewer rehab project that's going to benefit downtown. It's ultimately going to benefit the commercial and the industrial businesses that are here, but more importantly, the ones that we can attract here. Uh, for 14 years, I have been pro-business, and I think we need to continue that. That train has to keep going down the track. We have different tools that we've benefited by, uh, historic tax credits here in the city of Brockton with the gateway community, great proximity uh, to Boston, jumping on the commuter rail, um, you know, the TIF and the tie. Um, but ultimately, we need to make sure the businesses that are here stay here. When Sorelli Foods left, that wasn't good, but also attracting businesses here. I just met with Lieutenant Governor the other day for 75 Commercial Street. These are the good things that need to happen in Brockton. Businesses come here, helps our tax base, helps everybody. So uh, that's how I would handle that situation, Ray. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you, Councillor. Now the next question, uh, we'll ask uh, Councilor Sullivan to provide the first response, but uh, both of you as being born and raised in Brockton uh, are probably familiar uh, with the CSX freight yards. Whether you played, the, played in them, snuck into the property as a youth, uh, I'm sure that you've been exposed to them uh, you know, in, your, in your roles presently. So our question is related to the future of the CSX rail site. This is one of the largest available sites for possible development within the city and it is located just outside of downtown and it's known as the CSX Freight Yards. This 30 plus acre site has been inactive since the early 1980s and is, as we understand it, available for purchase. What would you like to see done with this site and what actions would you take to see your vision through to completion? Councilor Sullivan. Well, it is privately owned right now, so we'd need to get all the stakeholders around the table to try to vet it out, see what the purchase price is. There's also some uh, 21E thoughts on contamination. Uh, we'd need to look at that. In my legal training, I'd be able to sit down with the city solicitor. Uh, but it is ripe. I mean, it's ripe for development. We did a $250,000 feasibility study for a uh, public safety building. I know uh, Chief, Con um, Chief Crowley wants it on that site. Um, Chief Williams didn't think it would be great for the fire department. It's too far away from 20 for. It could be a solar project, could be a bright field. We have one in Brockton, we could do another one. Could be a sports complex to help our youth. Um, it, it should be ripe for development. We just need to kind of do our due diligence, kick the tires, make sure, you know, the right businesses go there. Uh, but if I am fortunate enough to be elected the next mayor of Brockton, that is going to be paramount because it's sitting there right now. But we need to make sure we do our due diligence and if we purchase it or acquire it, we don't spend too much. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Pereira? Yes, <clears throat> I would like to uh, work collaboratively uh, as a conglomerate with, with all the other stakeholders and organizations in the city, and also maybe look at relocating Mainspring, uh, because I know that's uh, something that is a blight to downtown. Uh, and these are not homeless, these are people without homes, so because you're homeless doesn't mean that you're any less of a, a regular person. So we need to, again, make sure we're collaboratively working with relocating Mainspring, potentially creating a, a, a holistic approach uh, where we have a campus-style uh, uh, development where we're looking at the wraparound rather than the shelter in and out. Uh, so what I'd like to see is an apartment complex, a, a cafeteria area where they're not just being fed, but they're learning how to cook, and also a workshop area where they're going to learn about financial literacy, uh, workforce development, and also uh, mental and health uh, assistance also. And how we do that is by working collaboratively with the state and different agencies, again, to make sure that we're pooling in the resources uh, and also looking at other mixed-use opportunities where we can make sure that that area thrives. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. Pereira. In, in continuing our thought about available parcels, uh, I'm sure you're very, you are both very familiar with this parcel, and we're going to ask Mr. Pereira to respond to this question. This is the parcel of the Brockton Fairgrounds, mm -hmm. and uh, the Brockton Fairgrounds totals more than 60 acres, and it is the most prominent underutilized parcel within the city. It has been mentioned as a possible location for a Walmart, a housing development, the development of private housing, or more recently, the location of a possible casino. What do you think you would, uh, would be the best use of this parcel, and how could the city assist with its development? Mr. Pereira? Great question. <clears throat> so 
From my uh, experience, we always want to look at revitalizing an area and also looking at, again, mixed use. And uh, right now, that place, that area in the city is kind of desolate. Uh, there isn't really uh, too much uh, businesses on that. Well, there's business on that corridor, but you can see a lot more space there as well. So we want to look at the fabric of that community. We want to look at possibly a technology park uh, so we can introduce more businesses there, uh, especially in the uh, innovative time that we're in now. So imagine Google, Amazon, or any of these uh, innovative uh, life science or informational science uh, developments in that area. We would also like to have a linkage program with the high school so that they would be able to uh, have opportunities, whether it be internships or college credit courses, uh, paid internships at that, so they can be able to uh, go into that field, but also stay in the community and come back and invest in the community. Uh, we also know that part of that area is supposed to remain open space, so why not have a park where the students can go and the community can go as well? Uh, and also look at mixed-use development. And we know that malls are dying uh, because of the uh, e-commerce uh, 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 sector, so making sure, again, that we look at how how we could make it a, a cohesive uh, uh, network. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pereira. Councilor Sullivan? Well, much like CSX, the fairgrounds is owned privately by the Kearney family. A uh, portion of it is zoned agriculture. Um, but at the end of the day, I think we would need to sit down in a roundtable discussion to see what is the future? What is the future of that site? I grew up right near there. My mom and dad still live right near there. The third Barav component is residential. The Forest Ave is close to Brox uh, Brockton High. The Route 123 Belmont, uh, I think, is, is a perfect potential location for that uh, f police and fire station, public safety, right on Route 123 Belmont Street. Um, but I also think, and I know we rezoned that area recently with the uh, help, help of the City Council and Rob May to an arts and entertainment uh, component, maybe a movie theater. At the end of the day, we need to get a tax base right there. There's a portion of that is not paying taxes, and we need to figure outside of the box, how can we do it? And it, it, it starts like this, open discussion, figuring out where we can go forward, and ultimately that will be developed, but I want to make sure it's developed the right way to benefit all Brocktonians. Well, thank you, Councillor. Our next question, it's, it's really hard to believe that uh, the Chamber, since uh, President Cooney's arrival here so many 20 years ago, perhaps, uh, and uh, he took the lead in putting together a forum on uh, water and wastewater treatment. And it's hard to believe that some 20 years ago that uh, we here in this room uh, hosted forums and discussions and up at Stonehill College to advance uh, regional water, uh, a desalinization solution, and wastewater treatment resources. So the next question uh, to be asked for of uh, Councillor Sullivan for the first response is related to the water supply and wastewater treatment. As you know, the city of Brockton is referred to as the hub of the Metro South region and benefits from possessing certain infrastructure like a desalinization plant for water and a modern wastewater treatment facility both of which have been in the news recently and over the past several years. What role do you think the city should play as a regional partner in providing water and sewer capacity to its neighbors within the region? I think it'd be, I absolutely am. So Aquaria, we were mandated for a secondary water source by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So um, Aquaria was that secondary water source. Uh, last year I filed a resolution with my colleague, Wynn Fowler, to entertain the MWRA coming to Brockton, connecting. Uh, really, it doesn't seem to be feasible right now. The pipe's too small in Stoughton. We'd have to go all the way to Blue Hills. Um, but, but it's an asset. And right now we have seven, almost seven years left on that contract. Last night, I'm proud to say, the City Council sent it to finance uh, for an amendment that Moses Rodriguez as mayor has done with Aquaria. Um, water is, is a natural resource. Uh, there's a lot of value in that. I will say I have a little bit of concerns because the only customer of Aquaria since day one is the city of Brockton. Uh, the $78 million to, to acquire it was way out, way out of realm. So I think we need to come together collectively with all the, again, the stakeholders ready to figure out what can we do because we right now are really beholden to Silver Lake. And God forbid something happened to Silver Lake, we'd all be in trouble. So we need to vet it out. Uh, but ultimately, something needs to be acquired, and, and I think maybe we look at that and uh, move forward with our uh, neighboring communities. Th thank you, Councillor. Mr. Pereira? Thank you. <clears throat> Again, with my experience working with the regional uh, communities, I would like to look at uh, different options. Of course, we always look at the multifaceted approach. I think that uh, water is uh, the next gold, uh, basically, especially when you look at uh, expansion and, uh, of businesses and also climate change as well. Uh, so we need to make sure that we are ahead of the, the uh, game. Uh, I would like to look at collaborating with our regional, uh, our, our neighboring communities to go ahead and look at uh, possibly purchasing with Brockton being the uh, major stakeholder there. Uh, I'd also look at, uh, not just look at the MWRA, but maybe looking at a Brockton uh, Water and Sewer Commission. Uh, we've seen it in different uh, areas of the Commonwealth, like Boston, like Springfield as well. Uh, and through that collaborative uh, 
pattern and method, we'd be able to uh, sell to different communities, but also make sure that we are ready uh, for expansion and ready for any uh, emergency situations as well. Well, well thank you. Um, Although we don't expect you to try to solve or answer entirely completely um, uh, a problem that's been uh, we've been dealing with for multiple generations, perhaps a follow-up question. We'll, we'll ask Mr. Pereira to um, start with the follow-up question, and again, it's on uh, water and sewer. Uh, Mr. Pereira, would you be in favor of establishing a regional authority to cost share future capital and operating costs with participating communities? Or should the city offer access to water and sewer on a fee-only basis? I think we should look at the regional aspect of it. Uh, it's harder to look at the fee basis because you know, other municipalities are uh, concerned, especially when uh, it's not being marketed the right, right way. Uh, so I'd like to look at, again, a collaborative method of uh, bringing all the stakeholders to the table. Uh, I'd also want to make sure we're doing a feasibility study to see what the uh, comparison would be uh, between the two different options as well. So when you refer to stakeholders, would you be in favor of forming a regional authority or governing body to do that? Correct. And that basically is the Water and Sewer Commission uh, in different uh, aspects of that. Okay. But a regional authority. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Councilor Sullivan? Yeah. I mean, I think, again, after, after being uh, 14 years on the City Council, uh, we would be naive not to contemplate a cost sharing. Uh, for the last 10 years, I've been appointed the Brockton representative for the uh, Plymouth County Advisory Board. I vice chair that. And there's powers and numbers. And if you can share costs, it's going to minimize what the ultimate taxpayers here in the city of Brockton are going to pay. But with that being said, we also need to look at what are the ramifications. Right now, we do have some tie-ins. Stonehill College ties in. Uh, uh, we have uh, up, up in uh, Stoughton, the uh, TJ Maxx area. Um, so I think what we need to look at, Brocktonians, and more importantly, the elected officials, is how are we going to pay for the replacement of the pipes? And I've spoken to Larry Rowley, DPW Commissioner, some of our pipes are from 1880. There's leaks every single day. And if we have a catastrophe, you know, we're going to be in trouble. So um, we would be naive not to look at that, Ray. Um, and as, you know, a business guy myself, uh, I would use that at the table to figure out what is the proportional share and how we move forward to the next level. So, so just a follow-up, because yes. I, I pressed Mr. Pereira. Would you be interested in considering fo uh, forming a regional no, I, I think I think we'd need to. Okay, great. Thank you for answering answering that question, both of you. Uh, the next question, uh, we're going to ask Councilor Sullivan for your first response. And it ha happens to be with the term of the mayor's office and the city charter. Uh, would you support extending the term of service for the mayor uh, who is elected in the city of Brockton for a four-year term rather than the current two years? And would you be in support of conducting a review of the city's existing charter? And if so, what do you see as the scope of this review? So two, two things right there. The last mayor was my colleague Winthrop Farwell, who was four years. And then the, 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 the residents decided when Jack Units came in to make it a two-year term. Um, what I think is, is a little risky in Brockton right now, it's, it's not staggered terms. So you could, in theory, have a new mayor, an entire new 11-member city council, an entire seven-member school committee. That's not good for Brockton people that live here and work here. Um, so I think we, we could look at it. The voters spoke relative to two years. But I will say, if Jimmy gets in or I get in, year one, you, you're really hitting the ground running. But then year two, you're going to have to be campaigning again. Charter review. I did it when I was a town attorney in Randolph. You need to have citizen initiative. You have a commission. And you review it point by point. We did it in Plymouth County as well. And then I'll Ultimately, a Charter Review Commission sends it forward for a home rule, the State House, and any changes to the City of Charter would be Brockton voters deciding. I think we need to look at it right now. A Form B type of government, strong council, weaker mayor is a misnomer. And I'm a City Councilor saying that because the mayor is a full-time job, City Council is part-time. So we need to look at that, Ray. Good question. Thank, Thank you. you. And just a follow-up to that, and then uh, obviously, yes. Mr. Pereira, you'll, you'll have the same opportunity. Do you see any limitations in the scope and uh, anything that would be a, a deal breaker? in terms of the scope if you were mayor to take a look at the charter review? No, I, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I think I think reviewing it and vetting it out is healthy. And I think if you're a CEO of a Brockton uh, business, uh, you would do that if you had a small business or a large business. And Brockton's a large business. There's no negative sides. It's doing your, your, your homework and your due diligence. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Pereira? Yes, um, I would definitely entertain a uh, charter review. I'd also look at uh, revamping the bylaws and the uh, zoning uh, ordinances as well, too. We need to update a lot of uh, the uh, books, the uh, rules we have on the books as well. And we need to also educate the community so they know what the purpose is of a charter review and what the uh, ramifications are for, uh, whether it be a short term or a, a change in the uh, form of government as well. Uh, and I think it's uh, very important that we educate 
educate the community uh, because it, it is uh, for the city of Brockton. And uh, as a person growing up uh, in you know our most uh, toughest neighborhoods, there's a lot of uh, children, a lot of uh, adults that you know may not have the time to understand government. Uh, but with collaboration and with uh, education, we're able to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Okay, and, and as I ask uh, Councilor Sullivan for a follow-up, is there anything that would be a deal breaker if you were mayor in terms of the scope that you would be looking for? No, not that I could think of at the moment, no. Okay, well, thank you. The next question we're going to ask you to be the first uh, responder, and it's about uh, a business-friendly Brockton. Now, many businesses comment that permitting and inspectional processes are long and sometimes unpredictable in Brockton compared to other communities. Would you support instituting a best practices, uh, focus groups, and satisfaction surveys for the various city departments involved with business development? Most certainly will. I uh, always uh, advocated and uh, campaigned on transparency, innovation, and moving things forward. Uh, at one of my events, I actually had someone <clears throat> introduce me to a young business owner that wanted to uh, open up a business in Brockton. It's actually an e-commerce business uh, with little, little overhead, but he was uh, met with uh, uh, difficulties in uh, obstruction when he was trying to pull the permit. Uh, and really, not even just uh, because of that, but because our city government did not know what the purpose was for that permit. They did not understand what e-commerce was. So uh, there's a lot of education that needs to go on as well, but also a lot of uh, revamping of the system. We paid $80,000 for a website, uh, and there's a lot of things that you cannot do. I want to make sure that we look at the process, make sure it's transparent, and make sure that everyone knows what to expect when approaching a permit. And I also want to make sure that there's collaboration through different departments so everyone is on the same page and not directing one to the other, uh, and again, uh, having that misgap. Okay. Th thank you. Councilor Sullivan? I think we need to be business friendly. I think we need to modernize, uh, you know, both technology-wise and also people-wise. Um, when, when people want to come here to invest in Brockton, Ted Carmen's a good example, right? Or, or, or Joffrey Anatole at 47 West Elm Street, or Jason Corb when he did the old Stalin Dean uh, building. You know, they're coming here to invest their, their capital, uh, and of course they're in it to make money. Um, but we need to make sure that it's streamlined. When people go to City Hall, um, you know, they don't have to go around here and there and everywhere. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make people sense, business sense. So so well, we, we, need, we need to contemplate that. The parking garage is a good example, right? It was vetted out, you know, it was hammered. It was the right thing to do. I supported it. it it's going to attract businesses. So to be business friendly uh, is not a cliche in my idea. And if I become mayor, it's going to ring true because without the businesses, Brockton is going to suffer. Our, our, our finance is going to suffer. Our schools are going to suffer. So it's a win-win to come together, Ray. And I'd be working with the chamber, uh, downtown, Montello, and Campello Business Associations to get that train moving down the track, as I said earlier. Okay. Just, um, just a follow-up to that, and I'll just uh, ask Mr. Pereira first. Uh, what is your view on the effectiveness of uh, the uh, tax incremental financing program, and do you continue with support, and how do you see that as uh, providing a business-friendly Brockton? I think the uh, <clears throat> the TIFs and the ties as well too need to make sure that we're not just looking at incentivizing businesses, but making sure that uh, we are uh, beholding to the uh, the uh, uh, taxpayers. Uh, when we have a rate uh, have a a break that's uh, for a long term, I think we need to renegotiate re that, have a shorter term, uh, and make sure that we're transparent uh, and also look at different incentives as well. Uh, we need to look at the diffs also and make sure there are more districts that we can uh, provide more financing opportunities there. Uh, and also working with neighborhood associations and creating more neighborhood associations so we can create those borders and identity in those communities uh, so we could look at opportunity zones, uh, which the federal government and the state have been uh, open uh, to do and have been uh, looking to implement it, and also making sure that we look at other opportunities and uh, uh, incentives that's going to uh, bring businesses in, and also, again, with the linkage programs that are going to work with our schools uh, to create more opportunities for our students as well, and also for our local community, whether it be elderly, uh, low income, or those looking for for a trade, uh, switching over to a different work uh, sector, we want to make sure that there's opportunities there. So I would uh, make sure to uh, continue to uh, promote the TIFs, but I want to renegotiate the terms there to make sure that it's adequate for our community members and taxpayers. Uh, being a homeowner, I see my taxes go up since 2015. Uh, we need to reinvest into the community. So Thank you. And uh, Councilor Sul Sullivan, let me repeat the question, and we'll give you some extra time to answer okay. as well. Okay, just uh, being fair. Uh, so again, what is your view of the effectiveness of the uh, TIF program, and how do you think that that can make uh, Brockton a business-friendly community? Great question. So for 14 years, every Monday night when I go to city council, I do my homework, and I'll tell you some real-life examples. W.B. Mason was going to leave Brockton. Corporate office was going to leave if we didn't give them a TIF. That would have been not a good thing. So we gave them the TIF. We also attracted businesses. Keneally Foods up on Pearl Street, Crown Linen. 
uh, the old Howard Johnson's factory, um, and then uh, Bernardi Auto, which now McGovern. Um, we gave them tips to come here, and uh, it was a forbearance, but ultimately, they're here. We would have had vacant buildings without the TIF program. The Thai program, some people were opposed to that. I wasn't. It was negotiated in good faith by the late Mayor Bill Carpenter. I supported that. It's going to be new building construction, the old Kresge building, and Ted Carmen's going to be rehabbing. I mean, this is substantial investment in the city of Brockton. So I said it before, there's, there's tools in the toolbox if we use it wisely. Historic tax credits, the gateway initiatives, there's certain things that I've already done for 14 years, and I'm going to continue to do that if I am elected mayor. We need to do these things, right? Be short-sighted not to, because ultimately, it's it's going to help everybody in Brockton. Thank you. Thank you for your response. The next question uh, we're going to ask of you, uh, Councillor Sullivan, and the generation of these questions come to uh, uh, the president of our chamber, Chris Cooney, from time to time. <clears throat> and they're also the subject of different forums and different community meetings as well. Uh, the first question, Councillor Sullivan, is on uh, homelessness and the homeless population, which we see. There appears to be a growing population of homeless people hanging around downtown on a regular basis. Can you list some steps uh, you anticipate taking to manage this challenge and reducing the negative impact on shoppers, workers, and others who may feel unsafe in downtown as a result of seeing the homeless population and perhaps some of the behaviors that result? Yeah, I mean, it, it's perception's reality. <coughs> and when people are coming downtown, they don't have necessarily a great perception of Brockton. Uh, what I will say this, and I'll be very frank, there's not one human being that chooses to live on the streets. We always grew up with the idea you want a roof over your, house, over your head and live in a, as a res residential dwelling. Um, but developers have called me as a council at large and as the council president and as the acting mayor this week saying, hey, what are you guys going to do about this? What I will say is we need to have a compassionate approach and a wraparound approach because the folks that are homeless that are staying at Main Spring and Father Bills have to be out by a certain time. And during the winter months, they trek down Main Street and they stay at the library. We need to figure out what are some of the services. I gave a speech the other day at the Universal Church, 50 homeless people talking to me saying, listen, we want to have the ability to try to better ourselves. We want computers to do resumes. A lot of these people... Uh, lost it because of drug addiction or alcohol abuse, but also they're on the streets because of the, the, the homeless uh, factor by the uh, foreclosure epidemic. So we as elected officials, and I mean the mayor and the city council and the state delegation, school committee, have to come together because we have to better Brockton all that live here. And, and it's, it's a serious issue. We're not going to cure it over the, overnight, Ray, uh, but if I'm the mayor, I'm going to wrap myself up and get into it because we need to. Great. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Mr. Pereira. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'll uh, again elaborate what I mentioned on earlier with the uh, holistic wraparound approach, uh, relocating the Main Spring area to uh, CSX Yard, but uh, making sure that, again, we're looking at uh, the uh, holistic, the multifaceted approach, making sure, again, that we're working with our neighboring communities because we know that that not all of the homeless people that are in Brockton are from Brockton. Uh, so we need buy-in and uh, cooperation from our neighboring communities and also with the state as well to really solve this issue because it is an epidemic uh, and it's uh, combined with the opioid epidemic with the foreclosure uh, situation uh, and all, also making sure that there's representation at the table for uh, people as such that are going through these experiences. Uh, when I work with the, uh, uh, the regional planning agency, it is paramount that we go out and receive feedback uh, so we can know what the issues are. Uh, and if elected mayor, I'll be rolling up my sleeves and making sure that we're there on the ground day in and day out till this problem is solved. Thank you. Our, our next uh, question is going to go to um, Councillor Sullivan, and if I can frame it, it's hard to believe that it's been uh, since the year 2002 that the Campanelli Stadium and the Shaw's Center opened, and it was uh, viewed as a great regional and community resource. Uh, there were sellouts. Uh, the Shaw's Center was oftentimes occupied, and it was a great venue for people to go to. And so our question now is on the future of the Shaw's Center. Uh, with so many Brockton-based organizations holding events and programs outside of the city of Brockton since its closing, as mayor, what course of action will you take to address the future of the Shaw Center? Well, it's an asset, right? It's a Brockton asset. And like your house is your asset, right? So if your front steps are breaking, you hire a mason to repair your steps. You're plumbing, you hire a plumber to take care of it. Brockton fell, Brockton and the officials, and I'll, I'll, take, uh, I'll take my lumps for that as well, we, we, we didn't address the asset. Now, it wasn't under the control of, of Brockton, it was under the control of B21. We have it back now, it's our asset. The next mayor of Brockton has to invest money. Right now, the bond market's awesome, right? We can get a great municipal bond, 
maybe amortize it over 20 years. And, and we need to invest money in it because it's a Brockton asset. And then we're going to reap benefits. Because back in the day, I went to concerts up there with my wife, Willie Nelson, Brian Adams, or Bob Dylan, um, and The Rocks was sold out. Now, Chris English is running The Rocks right now. And if you go up there, and I take my kids up there, I have three children, it's not a great venue right now. So we need to come together to figure out how can we enhance that asset, the Shaw Center, and it's investing money, putting money into it. We're going to reap the benefits if we do. So we need to do that. The next mayor needs to do that. Th thank you, Councillor. Mr. Pereira. Thank you. <clears throat> so you mentioned, uh, it was mentioned earlier that the, uh, the uh, city planner had created a arts and entertainment district. Uh, again, I want to make sure that we emphasize on looking at multifaceted approaches and making sure that we're looking at investing and also making sure that we are expanding what can be done in these areas. Uh, it's very important to collaborate on making sure that looking at the marketing, the wayfinding, and making sure that entertainment is a priority at this area. Uh, I also want to make sure that the schools are involved as well, too, because this is the, the hospitality and uh, service industry is very important. Uh, and thriving and it's something that we need in the city of Brockton but also with the uh, sports issue as well too uh, we have uh, students that you know want to go uh, to college and play baseball and uh, other sports as well uh, but don't have the opportunity to do so whether it's uh, the uh, college or the uh, inexperience and the availability of it also so uh, we want to collaborate with different organizations to make sure that they know that the Shaw Center is there but we have to invest in it as well to make sure that it's up to par uh, but also again with the marketing aspect people need to know that it's there people need to know that it's viable and that it's a affordable as well. Okay. Th thank you, Mr. Pereira. The next question, uh, we're going to ask you to uh, provide the first response. It happens to deal with policing but and uh, the safety in the community, but from a slightly different aspect. Uh, coverage of policing and the amount of resources and financial resources and equipment that's provided to police departments throughout the city of Brockton and the region, frankly, they're well covered in the uh, news media. But this question is slightly different. What changes will you be making in policing within Brockton? And how will you leverage residents to make the community a safer place? Mr. Pereira. Great question. <clears throat> so I want to improve on community policing and community engagement. We know that it is uh, paramount that we hire more police officers, but we also know that it's expensive. So we need to bring in more dollars, more revenue to the city of Brockton we could, so we could look at that. But working with what we have, we need to make sure that there's better communication and collaboration within the community. I believe when we have more police officers in the community and more uh, community members who knowing who our police officers are, we'll have a stronger sense of respect and a stronger sense of responsibility. Uh, we also want to look at a citizens, citizens advisory committee who would look at uh, hiring recommendation practices and also looking at informing informing the community about uh, what to do and well, what is going on in the community. Uh, I want to also make sure that we have a stronger connection and communication with the police officers. So working in uh, collaboration with the neighborhood associations, we would uh, look at the uh, formula of having police officers assigned to these neighborhood associations and collaborate with other neighborhood associations and be a liaison between community and government as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pereira. Councilor Sullivan. So everyone deserves a safe safe community and a safe city and we need a clean city and a safe city uh, if I'm elected mayor first thing I'm gonna do is gonna hire more police and people say Bob where do you come up with the money um, well first of all 14 budgets I've questioned this every time the overtime and I understand collective bargaining and there's dollar amounts attributed to that but we can take some money to hire more police the brave men and women to walk the streets community community policing is key but also walking the beats we need to get that back on track. When I was a kid growing up in Brockton, you saw the police officers, they knew you. We need to create that collaboration. We also need to hire police officers that speak multiple languages and work in collaboration with the DA's office, which is downtown here in Brockton, doesn't need to be, could be located anywhere in Plymouth County, um, and the stadies and the feds. That collaboration, working with the educators, because the youth right now uh, are, are being troubled, right, with social media. So we need to figure out from a synergy approach, how do we work together? I would hire more police, and I'm proud to say my campaign for the mayor has been endorsed by Brockton Police Patrolman's Association as, long, as well as the Brockton Firefighters 144. But a safe community is paramount, and we need to do that. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Sullivan, we're going to ask you to make the uh, next response here, please. Uh, and this is related to uh, diversity, something that uh, is well covered. And we, li we do live in a diverse community. It's a different community than when I grew up and perhaps when many of us here uh, grew up. And uh, this has also been covered in the news media. As mayor, you will serve as CEO. And as CEO, how will you meet the needs of this diverse community in the providing of public services, employment practices, and board appointments? 
Councillor Solomon. Yeah, well, first of all, that's the beauty of Brockton. It's always been a beautiful, diverse community, right? It's just a different wave of immigrants right now. When my dad's parents came here from Ireland to work in the factories with the Irish and the Italians and the Lithuanians and the Polish, now it's just a different, beautiful wave from the Cape Verdeans to the Haitian to the people from Angola. That's what makes the fabric, the quilt known as Brockton. If I'm elected mayor, uh, you have to embrace and welcome and, 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 and include, include everybody. Again, I said this in my opening, the days of walls up, those are gone. That's, that's short-sighted. It's, it's saying, hey, I'm going to walk into City Hall and I'm going to see people that, first of all, speak my language and can relate to me. You know, I'm a 49-year-old white guy. Can't change my age, can't change my color, but I'm a Brockton guy. And I want to work with everybody in Brockton. That's what it's about. That's why my wife and I are raising our three kids here in Brockton. So, um, it's again, it's a serious issue. It needs to be addressed. The CEO vis-a-vis -vis the mayor needs to do that. And you, you bring together the skilled people that are going to welcome your team and enhance your team because it's a team effort. That's what's making Brockton move forward. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Pereira? Great question. <clears throat> so what I will focus on, uh, if elected, is again making sure that we look at uh, the multifaceted approach. And I uh, harp on this because, again, we need to look at different innovative practices. So, uh, And that's what I mentioned, the Citizens Advisory Committee, uh, which would look at making sure that we're looking at diversity, uh, uh, not just you know what the Diversity Commission does, but making sure that we're looking at the most qualified people uh, to be on the board uh, and making sure that cultural competency is there as well, too. Uh, you don't have to uh, be a person of color to understand different cultures, uh, and that's why I want to make sure that we're working with everybody uh, from all walks of life. I do that now as a regional planner uh, and making sure that we're educating each other on our cultures that we have here in the city of Brockton. Uh, what that means is basically whether it be workshops or more uh, multicultural events. Right now we have everyone off in their silos uh, and we want to make sure that everyone is able to collaborate. So what, instead of having just a Cape Verdean festival, why not have a Brockton festival where we have all the different uh, flags uh, present uh, and making sure that again we are uh, cherishing and in, uh, encouraging others to learn about different cultures as as well. Uh, and that's what I've seen uh, growing up in the city of Brockton, and that's what I want to see uh, happen now. Okay, thank you. The next question happens to deal with something that the governor, uh, Governor Baker, and the Baker administration have labeled as a crisis. Uh, the governor has labeled and the administration has labeled that there's a housing crisis here in the Commonwealth. And the governor has challenged uh, the Commonwealth and his administration to work on the development of more than 135,000 housing units for both uh, workforce housing and, uh, and market rate housing. So when we deal with housing and, and note that it is a, a crisis and uh, what is your appetite to see the development of more housing here in the city of Brockton and what type of housing will you support and where do you prefer, prefer that it be built? Mr. Barrera. Thank you. <clears throat> so again, using the experience that I have uh, as a planner and making sure that we, when you implement something, it's there for the long term. So you want to make sure that you're doing it right. Uh, something that I mentioned last election cycle was measure twice, cut once. Because once you put something there, it's there for a long time and it can have either a negative or a positive effect on our communities. Uh, when you look at, uh, you know, I'll use some jargon, but the opportunity zoning uh, that uh, has been introduced by uh, the federal administration, uh, it covers different areas in the city of Brockton and it includes housing as well. So when I mentioned about revamping the charter and the uh, zoning ordinances and bylaws, that's where we want to look at uh, elderly housing, uh, in-law apartments and extensions as well. Uh, we want to look at 55 and older uh, projects also. And again, TOD development, transit oriented development. We have three stations in the city of Brockton. Uh, where I'd like to see a lot of that happen is not just downtown, but the other economic sectors of the city of Brockton, uh, whether it be the west side, east side, north and south. Uh, we see a lot of uh, uh, discrepancies and uh, dilapidated buildings, uh, and we need to make sure we change that and revamp the system. Okay, thank you. Councilor Sullivan? So for two years, I volunteered to be on the planning board. Um, Mayor Units put me on the planning board, and then when I was elected to city council, I said, you know what, I learned something on the planning board. It's called 40R, Smart Growth Zoning. Uh, and I brought it forward to the city council, and I said, listen, it's going to be a catalyst for investment downtown of Brockton. It's going to help Brockton if we accept it. And it was accepted, and the Mayor Bell's already signed it into law. And you know what? It came to reality. Five zones in the core of the city of Brockton. That's why Trinity Financial invested $30 million downtown. That's why Vincentes did the natural expansion to the old star market. I mean, that's real money. That's things that, that happen. Now, housing, both market and affordable, is, is key, right? Brockton is really at a paramount right now. It's located prime to Boston. The rents in Boston and Quincy are high. So we're having some young professionals come to Brockton. And we'd be foolish not to entertain that. But it's also a cost analysis, right, depending on how much that would have an 
a negative impact potentially on the school. So I support housing. I support commercial rate and industrial mixed use. We need to look at it. Again, we need to look at all the programs that are out there right now for developers that can help. Tomorrow, uh, the Chamber's doing the, the summit at Thorny Lee. We're going to have really a, a hot issue right there, and it's going to be there. I'll be there, right? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, we're coming to, we only have a few more questions. And one is uh, preparation for you to serve as mayor. And Councilor Sullivan, we're going to ask you the question first. What life and service experience have best prepared you to serve in the role as mayor of the city of Brockton? Well, again, thank you, great question. Uh, I'm a Brockton person, born and raised with the Brockton High. Uh, my mom and dad still live here, my in-laws still live here, my wife's from Brockton, we met actually at high school. Um, and I'm a public servant for 14 years. I'm not a politician, I'm a public servant. What you see is what you get. And I proudly serve all citizens in the city of Brockton. I just wanna take you to the next level right now. And you know, I have a law degree and I have a business degree, but those are great pieces of paper on the wall, but what have I done over the 14 years? It's not how long you served, it's what have you accomplished? And I've accomplished a lot to help Brocktonians from the seniors to the veterans. So I think experience matters. This is a serious job, there's no learning curve, but I also have a great relationship with other elected officials, so there has to be a collaborative approach to move forward but my number one thing Ray is to be a husband and a dad and uh, and that's my proudest thing and and that's why I'm running uh, my slogan is leadership for Brockton's future and it's the youth that are the future of Brockton and that's why I coach soccer basketball and baseball I'm a lousy coach boys and girls I tell them that all the time but I'm out there to try to make a difference as a mentor thank you counselor Mr. Pereira? Yes. <clears throat> Experiences uh, that I believe uh, have made me uh, ready for this position, uh, not just, you know, growing up in the city of Broughton, but growing up in some of the toughest neighborhoods, whether you're uh, Newberry Street, Tremont Street, uh, Crescent Court Projects, or Roosevelt Heights. I've seen the good, I've seen the bad, I've seen the ugly in the city of Broughton, and a lot of that still exists today. Uh, and I also, again, working with the uh, Regional Planning Agency and 17 municipalities, I've been able to see a lot of progress being made in those communities, not so much in the city of Broughton. I know we need to move forward at a faster rate. Uh, also, knowing that, uh, you know, I ran against Carpenter, uh, the late Carpenter, in 2017 when he was in his prime. Uh, I've seen the challenges. I've uh, seen the fire burning, and I ran towards it. Uh, and again, knowing that we continue to uh, have that communication and knowing that uh, he was confident uh, in uh, my experiences, uh, especially uh, assigning me to uh, a, uh, the uh, commission on uh, uh, the uh, blueprint for Brockton plan, uh, and making sure, again, that we have someone that's going to move this city forward, that's going to be innovative, and is going to not just look at it as a business, but also look at the people's and the person aspect of it as well, too, to help move the city forward again. Well, thank you, Mr. Pereira. And then uh, one of our final questions here, and I know that um, the, our audience here who will be watching this on cable can't see uh, the audience here who's present, but I know that you've brought some family members and supporters here, as well as some other business leaders who, uh, leaders who are here as well. But let's pretend that a distant cousin now comes to visit you here in the city of Brockton. And this question is going to be for you, Mr. Pereira, first. One of your distant com cousins comes here to visit you in the city of Brockton. What would be one of the one or two favorite places that you would take them to? D.W. Phil Park is where I would take them. It's a peaceful area in the community. It's a Frederick Law Olmsted designed park as well. And it's a hidden jewel uh, in the uh, South Shore area. Okay. Counselor? Well, I, I can't just say one. I mean, I, I'm, right. I love Brockton High School, right? It's still the uh, largest uh, public high school east of the Mississippi. Um, the Marciano Stadium, the statue, I mean, the Fuller Craft Museum. There's just so many beautiful things. DW, the, the golf course. So, um, you know, I would take a tour, a little caravan around all aspects, from Campello to Montello to Main, St Main Street. That's what makes Brockton so special, you know? Go up to the village. People that don't live in Brockton don't know what the village is. I mean, there's just so much. Um, but it's getting out, not just looking at sites, and it's interacting and communicating and talking. And that's, I think that's what it means uh, to, to, to serve. And, and, you know, if it was a distant cousin or someone that wants to invest in Brockton, that's what it means to be a public servant. You be a cheerleader for your community. And that's what I've done, and I'm going to continue to do that. So like Jimmy, I mean, there's so many beautiful things in Brockton we can show. Um, but, you know, there's not just one. Okay, well, thank you. And I think I heard him say that you were one of the beautiful things. That's what I think uh -huh. I heard. Thank so you. there you go. You. So um, <laughs> as we conclude our questions, and as you uh, each happen to have the opportunity to draw who wins the closing remarks, uh, Councillor Sullivan, uh, you were the winner, and you get to provide the first closing remarks. And if you can keep your uh, uh, remarks uh, brief, please. I will. Thank, thank you again, Ray and, and Chris and, and everybody here and those watching on TV. Um, this is exciting. It's exciting times in 
in Brockton. Um, we need to decide who the next mayor is. And, and you know, it's Jimmy and I, and we've been uh, campaigning hard, been professional and polite at all times, and that's not going to change, win or lose. Um, Brockton is home. It's my home, it's your home, and it's our home. I, I need to say that we need a safe home, we need an economic thriving home, but we need to have someone that's going to lead that home that has experience because it's a serious job. It really is. There's no learning curve, in my humble opinion. You have to know on day one. I've done it from appropriations to financial budgeting to accounting to legal to personnel. Those are the things you need to do. But I also know you need to be in the people business. And when people come to City Hall, they have to be welcomed and they have to feel part of the program. So again, my name is Robert Sullivan. <coughs> Check out my website, electrobertsullivan.com. Uh, I'm going to be number two on the ballot, uh, but I'm always number one for Brockton. I just want to thank you for your engagement, your interest, and I hope you'll consider me on November 5th. Thank you. Well, thank you, Councilor Sullivan. Mr. Pereira? Thank you. <clears throat> As you know, uh, this is, again, a very, very important election. Uh, I, this is my second time running for office, uh, and you know that, uh, it again, it is time for change in the city of Broughton. The uh, same old, same old is not cutting it. Uh, we need to be innovative. We need to make sure that we move this city forward. And through my experiences, uh, not just working with the regional plan to see, but growing up in the city of Broughton and also going to different places and seeing best practices, I know that I am ready to make sure that we move this city forward because I know it's not just me. It's we, we the city of Brockton. I have worked with the departments. I've worked with the people working uh, in the departments as well, uh, and also working with the state also. Uh, my uh, executive director uh, behind me uh, next door at OCPC is retiring, uh, but he has a wealth of knowledge. And also the other people that work in that office and all the other people that work in different agencies as well, like MassDOT, uh, like the uh, executive office of public safety. Uh, and those are the experiences that I bring to the table uh, and also working with the people of Brockton. I've seen the good, I've seen the bad, I've seen the ugly, and I think it's time that we elect someone that's going to be innovative, uh, engaging with the community, and not afraid to make change. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Pereira. Now I get to make the final comments here. So I would like to uh, basically thank both of you for being uh, here today on behalf of your constituents or future constituents. And also I'd like to commend you on uh, your brief responses and keeping uh, in accordance with the brief time frame that you had. And I would like to say uh, you would be both great candidates to be on Meet the Press because you're very direct and deliberate in your responses. So I want to congratulate you and thank you for that. And on behalf of the chamber, it's hard to believe that uh, um, you know Chris Cooney and I have been doing and moderating many of these events over the years. And I think that the chamber uh, wants to thank you and give you a lot of credit for your willingness to uh, run for office and your willingness uh, to serve. And we'd like to thank all of those who have helped make this mayoral forum possible. They include uh, you uh, for candidate, Mr. Jimmy Pereira, uh, you uh, candidate for mayor, uh, council, and council president, uh, Robert Sullivan. We'd like to thank the Brockton Community Access uh, Cable for covering this event as they cover so many events of the chamber. Uh, the Enterprise, uh, the Chamber's Government Affairs Committee, uh, the Chamber Board of Directors and Staff, and we also like to thank UMass Boston, who sponsor the 2019 Government Affairs Committee. Please don't forget to vote. Vote on November 5th, and we wish you both the best, and congratulations to everyone here in the room for being here, and thank you very much. Good luck to both of you.